Heavenly Father, we ask your strength here and your might, your words, that we learn about you. Within your Son, we pray. Amen. The uh, <clears throat> I remember right, the last time we were talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? And everyone figured out that they had done that. And uh, so let's move on. Um, I have been, as I've done this study, been amazed how little the Holy Spirit is spoken of in the quote unquote gospels at least in the, the first three, um, he is not spoken of a lot. <clears throat> uh, I think because probably of the simple, simple Jewish understanding that well, this is God. You know, what, what do we need to talk with? We came up with a different name for him, the sanctifying spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath, and... Um, they, they use it in that way. The word, word comes out as sanctifying pneuma, uh, the Holy Spirit. And uh, maybe, and, and as we've said before, the sanctifying pneuma was a new thing. This has not happened before. I mean, he's shown up, but he, he never did stay. We showed you the entire uh, things of uh, references in the Old Testament Hebrew Scriptures of the few times that the Holy Spirit is mentioned because the Holy Spirit in the New Testament comes and remains because we are now owned. This is very good news. There's been an exchange and we have lost our dead breath for a living breath. And more exciting than you perhaps realize. The next phrase, or next verses, I'm sorry, that we were going to but it is a phrase. Um, Matthew chapter 28, please. We are not going to look at every verse that uh, the Holy Spirit is spoken of in the New Testament. Just most, um, but not all of them. So we're going to skip a few, but uh, now we've gotten all the way to the end of Matthew in, in two or three studies. Matthew 28, 19, uh, those very familiar verses. Go therefore, all, exousia, permission, authority has been given to me. It's been given to me. Go, therefore. The therefore is because of the permission. Go and make disciples of all the ethnos, of all the peoples, baptizing them, immersing them, let's get the picture here, immersing them into the word there, uh, I, we, a few semesters back we gave you that list of ice and in, that if you wanted to go in and mark your Bible with that, uh, different colors, uh, this is one of those where it's ice. It's ice. And that means, if you remember correctly, from the outside into. And the, wor the, it, the word or the name, the word name there, translated, um, can be not just name, but also title, character, reputation, or person in the Greek. Isn't that interesting? It can also be the title of the character, reputation, and person. Which, if we look at, what is Jesus telling us to do? Go and make disciples. Baptizing them, immersing them into. Immersing them into the name of God. of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Now, interestingly, I do need to tell you that the phrase we're looking at right now, uh, as 
you got an NAS, it probably has a bracket around it somewhere up in there. Is that, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Okay, maybe I was thinking of something else. Um, oh, that's right, I'm thinking of, of something else, yeah. But it's baptized them into. And into what? Into the name of Father. I, I think everyone thinks in terms of who is Father. Well, that would be Yahweh. Father God. Father. And into the name of the Son. Why? John tells us, as Jesus is speaking there at the end of his life, I in them, and you in me, and I in you, and us all in them, and it's going to be one glorious big mess. I just love those verses. Yay, we're all inside here. Isn't this great? You know, kick back and just living forever. And really living, fully permeated with the life of God and love for our Father. Into the name, into the character, into the character of Yahweh, God, into his title. But through, it has to be into the name of Yeshua. Jesus. Now, the Pentecostals, by the way, will tell you, and they're just, just as a quick vignette, if, <coughs> if you did not, when you were getting baptized, if they did not say, in the name of the Father and Jesus his Son and the Holy Spirit, it didn't take. So they're going to make sure they get the name right there. And I don't know where they got that, but that's what they're, they're adamant about it. Uh, that you have to say Jesus' name to, to make sure that you're right. Um, I think they will find out they were wrong, but either way, that's fine. Who am I to argue with it? But into the name of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, as we know, is, is not really named, uh, not given, quote, a name, although I have a sneaking suspicion that his name is actually, as we've talked before, Emmanuel, and I really believe that. Think about it. Into the name of God with us. Now, we're going to look at some scriptures here in a few minutes that are almost humorous of the God with us. And you'll see why when we talk about them. Um, baptizing them into the name of, 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 and into the name of the Holy Spirit teaching them. Now this is not where we're going, but he is telling us, here's what you make, how you make a disciple. It's not through, just through baptism. You must also do what? Teach them to, to tereo. If they're not tarrowing, they're not disciples. If they're not keeping his word, they're not disciples. Now, it would appear that there are three baptisms here. There's not. Because when you baptize, you're baptizing the person into the name. But with the Holy Spirit, it is different. Because he tells us that we are supposed to baptize them. I want you to hear me. Everybody, please. We are told to baptize them into the name. But remember that interesting thing, the fact that we looked at with Jesus Christ when he was physically upon this earth and with his disciples, and they were going around baptizing, and it made that statement to make sure you understood something. His disciples were baptizing, Jesus was not. <laughs> That is so incredibly powerful. I mean, it really is. He was not... What? John said, I come to baptize you with water, but there's going to be someone else that's going to be coming. I'm not worthy enough to untie the thong of his sandal. And he is going to baptize you in fire and in the Holy Spirit. Wow. Purification? and then more purification, the Holy Spirit. And it is Jesus Christ, think about this, your covenant Lord, the victor, who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. Scripture says it. We can baptize somebody into the name, symbolic in, in many ways. And we can lay hands on somebody, but we're not the one that baptizes them in the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus Christ. He is the one that does that baptizing. You understand, it may come through you, but you are, I assure you, you're not telling the Holy Spirit where to go. 
He is coming through you. But it is, it is Jesus Christ that does the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, any, any questions on, on any of that? Ms. Davis, were you? No? You're just coughing. Okay. Um, anyone on any of this? Pretty straightforward, but it, it's it worth talking about. No one? All right. Turn to Mark. Again, some very famous stuff that we see and misread often. I, Mark chapter 13. I have seen this used for abject laziness in the spiritual realm. Hey, I get to be lazy. Look at Mark 13, 11. When they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you that hour, for it is not you who speak, but it's the Holy Spirit. I have heard, I have heard. Well, you see, you don't need to go into the Word because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, Holy, Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is with me. And so the Holy Ghost can tell me what I need to say. What did Jesus tell you to do? Not to be anxious. Not to worry. He did not say to ignore the Word of God. He did not say not to keep. He did not say not to meditate. He did not say not even to study. He didn't even say, and I need to tell you, there are people I've heard say, well, you know, he didn't really tell you that you should prepare beforehand. He said, don't worry about it. There may be preparation that you need to do. I don't, I don't believe it's necessarily saying that. But he's saying don't worry beforehand about what you're to speak, what you're to say. Uh, I might also add that it's, it's funny uh, that you're brought before a court and they hand you over. The activity of preparing what you're going to say can be a very, very false thing because you don't know what they're going to ask. Remember, he just says not to worry. Uh, and that would be faith, which would come by being in the Word. Um, what, what does this tell us of the Holy Spirit? Well, that the Holy Spirit is God first, and he knows beforehand. Uh, he knows what needs are to be said for God's goals. Now, that's another thing that's important. You know, well, well, when you're taken before a court, you don't have to worry about it. You'll know what to say. Depends on whose goal it is. Um, God's goal may not be to get you out. Your goal is to, you know, look, where, where's my attorney? And get me out of this thing. And God's goal may be for you to go and witness to somebody inside that prison. Or to suffer for his name's sake. Um, this tells us again that the Holy Spirit of God speaks through man. And it also says for those of you that were concerned about it, that the Holy Spirit is not worried. Just thought I'd throw that in. I just kind of chuckle at these things sometimes. Um, <clears throat> anyone on that? I, again, we've... Yes, ma'am. And everything that he said there did happen. I mean, we are disciples, so it could be. But they did drag them before courts as a testimony. For governors and kings, for his sake. It's for because they are declaring the truth, and that's why they're being dragged, because it says the gospel must be preached to all nations. And when they arrest you, it wasn't they might, they might it's, yeah. it's when they do, and deliver you up. And he was warning them like that. That's right. Yeah. There wasn't going to be an out, there wasn't going to be an escape. This was going to happen to them. Yeah. And what did they speak? <laughs> Go look at Paul, Peter, they spoke the word. And I mean, they spoke the word. Stephen, let me give you the entire history of Israel. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's trying to wear them down. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. But he, what was going on? I mean, it said, and Stephen stood up filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter stood up filled with the Holy Spirit. But they spoke the word. You see, Paul, when he's speaking, he's speaking about salvation using the scriptures. And the New Testament hadn't been written yet. So, uh, yeah. And they, they, this is going to happen. And 
the goal was not getting them out of prison. There were other ways they were going to do that. Peter, wake up. Start walking with me. So much for attorneys. I paid your bail, bud. Come on, let's go. Hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Um, it's a part. He's providing the this this oneness with himself is a part of his covenant provision. Um, he, through, if we're one with him, he's going to protect us and he's going to defend us. So we shouldn't be anxious about taking care of ourselves because he's got it covered. Yeah, because one thing we need to think of, especially with us, what is life? What is life? Uh, if we define it as we, uh, as mankind defines it, biological life, we're, we're missing something great. And we are certainly missing the goals that God would have for your life. Uh, he's got it covered. And you're, you're getting drug off to have your head lopped off. Wait a second. I thought that, 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 that it's, you've got a great insurance policy. Uh, I had a guy that had been my supervisor at one time, and uh, he knew I was a believer. And later in life, he evidently got radically saved after he, he left, uh, retired. And I saw him once. He had come up to visit, and he had diabetic neuropathy so bad in his lower extremities um, that he said he had to he he had to look down when he walked to to see if his foot was on the on the floor um, he could walk without a cane but he couldn't feel either leg it, you, it, 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 when it gets bad i mean and he had it it was it was roaring in his body well he also got cancer he's an older fellow and, and it just got him never was the most healthy fellow in the world always kind of real round and real red all the time. And there were times I made him real red. And, uh, oh, we won't go into it right now, but uh, I saw him, and he came up and greeted me, and we talked for a minute. And I said, I, I, I hear you have cancer. And he, he said, yeah, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm praying that the Lord will heal me. And then he smiled real big. And he said, but if he doesn't, the insurance policy is the best around and it's paid up by the dealer. Pretty good. He was just beaming. I mean, just happy as he could be, uh, knowing he was in his Lord. And his, he really, I don't know where the rest of his life went, uh, but I can tell you that uh, when I met him that I thought, who is this guy? What happened to, his name was Ralph. What happened to Ralph? You know, I know Ralph. Ralph was kind of Ralph. And uh, uh, Ralph wasn't Ralph anymore. He, he really wasn't. He really changed dramatically. And, and died within a few uh, months, maybe a year after that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord was just reminding me of in Matthew 6 when it says, For this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life. And since it says for this reason, you know you have to go back and remember, realize what the reason is. And it's talking about double-mindedness and serving two masters. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was just showing me when you are anxious about things beforehand or just anxious about anything, then you're not walking in the mind of Christ. You're not walking listening up under. And then you are serving a separate master. So... When you are preparing beforehand what you can, what you should say or what you should do, then you're not walking by the Spirit. You're not walking in the way of the Lord, and that's why when you're speaking, it's not the Holy Spirit speaking. Oh um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and there you're absolutely right. Yeah. Go on. Were you finished? Or... I kind of forgot what I was. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I shouldn't even agree with you. Silently <laughs> agree. <laughs> if, if you remember, you can. Uh, and what she what she just said was, it's right. Um, you you don't 
if you have prepared a speech beforehand. Now, so I thank you for bringing that up. When I say prepare, I mean prepare like you prepare here in strange ways. I'm not building you a speech. Oh, sometimes you may build a speech, but I'm telling you, how much more would the Lord just want? What did you do this morning to get ready? I sat at the feet of my Father, and I said, fill me again with your Holy Spirit, and I'm going to meditate on your word. But you don't have an outline. Isn't it awesome? I'll be speaking for the next three hours, starting at 11.15 after the choir finishes. And we're all in trouble. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the preparation is in the Word, but not preparing this. Now, there's, there is a place for preparing, I believe, a ready answer. But that is a, a little different. Uh, I've told you the story before, I believe, about when I finally got just had had it up to here with people saying about our lives, that's legalistic. Isn't that's legalism? That's, that's it. I've had it. And I sat down and I wrote uh, biblically and all sorts of, and, and logically every rotten way that they would use the word legalism. And I prepared a ready answer. I don't know how many years ago that was. No one. I mean, it was constant. It was literally constant. Bam, 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 bam. You go to church. Aren't you legalistic? You know, you just look like you're legalistic. That tie's got to be legalistic. Um, well, the church we saw the other day, it probably was. Um, it's, it was real. This, this group looked, looked so bad. An old pair of blue jeans. We saw them. An old pair of blue jeans on somebody looked good. I mean, everybody, it, it was, it was un, unbelievable. Uh, but once I prepared that wet, ready answer, from that time on, I've had one person, one, probably in the last, I don't know, 20 more or more years, one person has used the word legalism in my presence. No one else, like Satan goes, you're getting ready to use legalism. Shut up. <laughs> Just settle down now. Be quiet. And they won't say it. Uh, it, it was good. It wound up being a chapter in Facebook. And so I just, I just literally, I took it from that ready answer and I stuck it in there. There's nothing wrong with having a ready answer. In other words, it, if, but it's when the Holy Spirit wants to pull it out. Oh boy, to be ready like that, now that's just absolute fun. But you're doing it anyway because of just the joy of being with your Lord and you're, you're excited about the answers of things. Now, with that, whether uh, this morning I was meditating on the verses you just brought up and this is one of the big places we were going to go this afternoon, so we're about to do that. Do not be anxious then about what you shall say. Turn with me. I hope. Yes, there's a Bible. Okay. Turn to Matthew chapter 6, please. I have a question for you. This is just, it just I went, wow. I've never seen it like this. How many years I've been meditating on this. Chapter 6, verse 19, please. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And of course, he goes into verses we've heard before. The lamp of the body is the eye and goes into the double-mindedness and, and all of those things. Now, I want to ask you a question. 
he says here in verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth. What treasures would he be talking about? What treasures is he talking about here? Very good. I don't think we often get it. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. And your brain clicks over, and all he's doing is giving us a description of earth. We're moth and rust destroying, we're seeds break in and steal. He's not talking about going off and buying a new television. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but, you know, I mean, etc. He's not talking about stuff. What in this chapter? Start in verse 1. No, no, no. We'll start with verse 19. No, we won't. Uh, verse 21. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I mean, this. I was just coming up out of the chair this morning. Y'all heard banging upstairs before. Uh, look, look where he starts. That we we just where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Got it? Verse one, chapter six, verse one. What's the treasure? What's the treasure? Being Come on. Being noticed by men. Yeah, recognition. Now, we go through this and we go, see, and God is telling you not to be worried about uh, money and what you're going to wear and don't, and about alms and prayer. And he's, what he's telling you is, is, and he goes on later, as he goes on in, in the rest of the chapter, he tells you not to be worried about food and all these other things, but his main deal, folks, in all of this, his main deal. I, look what he spends half a chapter, half a chapter on one thing. You are laying up your treasure on earth, and your treasure is the recognition of mankind. That's what the concern is. In giving alms, you're, you're, it's not the giving of alms. It's truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. I'm going to tell you something. And it's going to sound terrible. I know that'll be a shock, but it's going to sound terrible. When I tithe, and I don't tithe because of this, and I don't tithe with this in mind, but when I tithe, I expect my Father is going to pay me back loudly. <laughs> Not because I necessarily need it, but because He is my father and he said he would it is written thou shalt not test the Lord thy God right until you go to Malachi and he says go ahead turn your back on your junk turn your back on being rich you won't care anyway whether I pay you or not but I can and I will when I need to and he has proven himself faithful with us and I'm telling you, I do not, I, when I say I expect it, I don't think about it. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Oh, I'm, I'm here, you know, let me throw a little money over here, and God's going to pile it back on me. That's not the way I'm talking about. I'm simply saying that when I do that, I'm just, this is delightful, this is fun, and this is the way one in Christ lives life. And the expectation is, my Father is going to take care of us. Period. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not doing it to make money. I'm simply saying God takes care. Those things are periphery. What does Jesus say is not periphery? The seeking of recognition from man. And he says that really, if you get down to it, is the treasure that you've got and that you keep trying to lay up on this earth. My goodness. It's not money. It's people and accolades. I wonder if it get worse than that. The people that accolade eventually stop accolading. They get laid in the tomb. You understand? You get you, uh, these. What's the word? Uh, 
athletes. I can't believe that they're, they're, some of the people in the NFL are starting to sue the NFL because of head injuries. Will you help me out with this? How much did you get paid per game? I mean, there are people that get paid multiple millions of dollars for every game. And you think about it, they're only playing one position, which means they play probably half the game. Was it, is game an hour? Something like that? We'll call it an hour. I mean, I know there's timeouts and commercials, and you know they've got to stop and go do make a commercial in the middle of the game or whatever, but you think about that. For 30 minutes' time, they wind up getting paid $27 million or something. I mean, really, it's serious. No, I'm not saying that they're not skilled at what they do, but what do they do? Throw a ball, uh, catch a ball, run with the ball, <laughs> destroy someone that's running with the ball. <laughs> Boy, those guys are big. Uh, and I'm not going to argue with them about their pay either, I tell you. It's about attention. And they're getting their head rattled. You knew you were going into it. You were going to get your head rattled. If you don't want to get your head rattled, don't go there. Or get a bigger helmet. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't get this. You, what, what the NFL and uh, the people are paying them is to go and destroy their bodies. Honestly, that's what... And they will do it. So they can be recognized by others. They're laying up their treasure on earth. Um, and that treasure, folks, is the one thing, is the uh, seeking of accolades when you give, the seeking of accolades when you pray, the seeking of accolades when fasting. Um, Verse 16, this morning I was thinking of it, whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting by men. They, they bring in Eeyore just for this part. Uh, uh, read it to him, Eeyore, yes sir. I mean, he did it before, you know, with uh, uh, Balaam. Um, Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. They have their reward in full. Reward in full. Have you ever thought about the fact that when you're in Christ, your reward never gets filled? It's constant, forever, for eternity. The love of God constrains us to bring people in to that reward. Um, anyway, I found that very fascinating that in all of that, their concern is that they be seen fasting by men and seen. And, and Father tells us, go and hide. Go and hide. When you pray, go and hide. When you're giving, do it quietly. Um, I know one guy who, and we haven't in many years, but will not money that he gives to church and whatever, he will not report it to the IRS. Now, that's his business. We haven't done that in quite a few years, but uh, the, the reason he didn't do that is because he didn't want to be seen giving by men. Now, of course, the IRS is probably not going to be terribly impressed. And in, in my, just, just my opinion, if the IRS is willing to say, give money to a church uh, or, or to a, a non-profit or whatever instead of to the government, I have to say I'm all for it. Uh, it almost doesn't matter what's... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so, fine. But he, he doesn't do that. Okay. But the point is, is, and his concern is to be in secret, the point is that... Uh, and. It, and it's not that you can't necessarily say something about it. We give testimony of, of how God has provided for us as we have given. And as we, when we begin to tithe off of our, our gross, uh, it, it, I mean, God opened up and he hadn't closed them yet. It just continues to amaze me uh, 
how God provides for Mrs. Davis and myself in his love. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I, I forgot. Did you find out where you were? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, anyone on, on this that we were talking about there? Yes, Christopher. Um, it says, um, say to they have their reward in full, but it doesn't say they're satisfied. Oh, no. There ain't no doubt about that. Yeah, that's very good. That's very good. They have their reward in full. And they can't be satisfied. What? It's in full. You're not going to get any more. Yeah. All you get is accolades. If, if he says to give in secret, and it is that is that my Heavenly Father's going to reward, then secret it is. <laughs> I always love those verses too. Your heavenly Father who is in secret. You ever thought about that? Jesus say, is saying that God is hiding somewhere. I, I, just, I just laughed. God is hidden. Of course he can't be hidden. Oh, yes he can. He is hidden. But he sees in secret. We can't forget that one either. Your Father who sees in secret. Does Davis say anything on this? Nope. Anyone else on this? Yes. Um, just when you were you went over that, it just like really clicked, and um, you know, this guy was showing me, um, you know, do not serve. You you said basically the end result is that you know, this is all all the things closed, money, and all this is um, this is uh, for recognition. Like we would seek these things for that, and. Uh, and it's like, you know, it's kind of like the uh, law versus the uh, New Testament, how Jesus lays it out in Matthew 6. It's like, those are just the outward that, you know, and then there's the heart where he's talking about here. And, you know, just with money, it's like, uh, it's like, well, why do you want money? It's like, because, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like one of those times where you don't have very much money and you're really hoping people won't ask how much you have or something like that. And you're just kind of like, and you just wish you had more money just because uh, you, you're just afraid of what everybody else think of you. And with clothes, it's like, you, like, why do you want clothes? Like, the, all this clothes and everything. Well, if, you know, if I, if I don't have the nicest clothes and stuff, and I'll be, you know, people will look down on me and, you know, trying to win them for yourself and for your own personal gain. Right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, some before last, we were, as you all know, traveling. And we were looking for a place to spend the night. And we had stopped in to get some information from somebody. And they said, well, there is this one place that you can go. And, um, but they're rather exclusive. Now, I'm a little on the slow side. And I didn't realize what he was saying was, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at your clothes. And you are not exclusive. It, do you understand what they were saying? You don't have the money to go there. You can't. Um, I started to tell them I was married to Mrs. Davis and that I was going anyway. I think they would have gone, money or not, you're coming in. It was real funny. We pulled in into the town later on, went up to said, well, this place, it says vacancy. I walked in and it was the weirdest looking place. They didn't have a front desk. They had multiple desks of people sitting there. And I couldn't figure out at first what was going on. Somebody said, can I help you? I said, well, I was looking for a room tonight. Well, talk to that guy right there. And uh, it turned out it was a, a resort that, that had some rooms. Uh, but the, the way it was done was through large companies uh, trying to impress their clientele or they were bringing them there for, a, uh, for seminars and where I'm sure they learned a lot on business and ripping people off and all that stuff. Um, and uh, I said, well, what is a room? And the guy said, I, I can get you into one for $350. I just laughed and walked out. And, 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 and the, 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 they had a guy standing at the door. Now, when you've got a guy standing at the door, I should have turned around and gone, I don't go to places where the guy is standing at the door. Uh, but sometimes it's not that bad. Well, this was that bad. Uh, and I know there are a lot of hotel rooms that can go up a whole lot more than that. 
but we're not into $350 a night. And uh, I laughed at the, the doorman. I said, why didn't you look me over and tell me on my way in? You, do I look like I've got that kind of money? He laughed with me. Because <laughs> he's probably never stayed there either. <laughs> he's a doorman, you know. He and I can talk. We're on the same level, you know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Whew, boy, what a place. Um, but you're, you're right. You don't want somebody to, to ask. But look at the end of chapter 6 and Jesus he, he kind of puts the thing into perspective. Uh, verse 32. All these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. Now, everyone stop. Just stop. All these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something about my, my Heavenly Father. And I'm going to tell you something about your Heavenly Father. Your Heavenly Father knows you need all these things before you ask. That's your Heavenly Father. I mean, that just gets... My, my dad is that way. And he not only knows it, he can, he can handle it without any trouble. That's no problem at all for him. Oh, uh, somebody will quote, you know it's coming. Oh, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There's been times when I've been needing money. I looked at him and I said, he needs to sell some. <laughs> but the tongue-in-cheek part of it is, God can make all the money he needs to make. And he's not going to be arrested for counterfeit. I mean, you don't know he, however he's going to get it to you. Uh, we, we don't need to concern ourselves with these things. Because... We are of a different kingdom that is not owned by gold and silver and clothes and all this other stuff. He knows what you need before you ask Him. But seek first His kingship and His, right, his rightness and all these things will be added to you. All these things. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, just... Um... Back to the beginning of the six, you are practicing your righteousness. Yeah, I mean, the more he tells us to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward um, with your Father who is in heaven. Um, something that the Lord showed me about that was certain versions as, um, and you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Um, but the NAU has with your Father who is in heaven, which I'm not sure which is the more accurate. Of translation, but it's just an interesting thought to think of with your Father who is in heaven, you know, that our reward is just Father himself, and rather than, oh yeah, Father's just going to give you these things, but our reward is in him. Do, do you hear, I, I don't know which one it is, John, you got a computer going there or someone? Near, okay, and that's not, do you hear it? Near is not from. They're almost exactly the opposite, actually. Near. So if it's near, what does it mean? It's covenant talk. You understand? It is with. With is, 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 is closer to it. Uh, and that's the point. You're in him and he provides. Very good. Very good. Uh, you hear the Gnosticism, even, in its end. The separation of... of Church and man, ecclesia and man. Straining out letters that we have to provide for ourselves—it's no different than the fall. You know, you're missing out. Something's lacking. You've got to act, and, <clears throat> and that's the lie. And, and Kevin <coughs> said he provides everything. So it's brought to mind. One time we were in the kitchen. You remember this? Upstairs, I have a little oh, yeah. box of. Come here, come here, come here. Um, yep, yep, yep. Come on.
<laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, once, well, I was, we were working in the kitchen. This was early days of <clears throat> IMI and uh, making rosemary chicken. And Dr. D had come down. <laughs> He had come down to help me in the kitchen. It was late, and I'd been meditating. Yeah, the Lord was speaking a lot about his provision and providing for us and just things like that. And um, I realized, and it was late at night, and that was back when I was the cook, and I uh, realized, oh, no, I've used up the last of the rosemary, and I looked in the cabinet, and, you know, we looked, and, you know, everywhere for extra rosemary, and, and because I had more chicken to finish, I think we even had a guest speaker here at the time. And I turned around, and there was on a cabinet sitting a brand new, unopened bottle of rosemary. And he was sitting in the the kitchen at the time in a chair, and we both just realized God just did that. So in my desk, I have that little bottle of rosemary, and we'll always have it. And God provides what we need. We're just so naturalistic. That's the norm of the kingdom of heaven is him providing. And, and it's supernatural above what we can figure out and work out and such. And so um, the Lord is faithful to do that. And he, we've seen it so many times, you know, provision of money. You know, the, we've told the story of needing money to pay for something. And then that day, in fact, we had talked about, okay, People had offered it was for one of you know a wedding and the people had offered even to help us financially we weren't going to borrow and just Lord you have to do this and even trying to work out how we were going to you know pray pay these things that we owed and that day Dr D walking in with a letter from a relative with ten thousand dollars in it you know we've had we've seen God just to the very minute up to when we're maybe kind of going, well, God, how are you going to do that? And then he comes through. So the bottle of rosemary, I, always, I was looking at my desk even today and saw it sitting there, and it was just, again, God provides. We're not to take thought. We're not like the heathen who don't believe in God. We're to be opposite and believe that our Father's faithful. Israel acted like heathens in the wilderness. You know, they were used to seeing you know, trusting in themselves, living in Egypt that, you know, all of those years and not the faith that our Father provides. And when he started outwardly showing he provided, they doubted. And God provides for us every day, but he wants to do it above and beyond because he wants to show he is a heavenly Father that's very much a part of our everyday life. Like George Wheeler said, you know, show that there is a living God actively involved in people's lives. So, anyway, I just... That's all. What? Mrs. Davis did not prepare beforehand what she did when called before them. Uh, okay, thank you. Some, there was a hand back here. Was it you? <laughs> Just uh, in Matthew six thirty-two, where we were before, it says, "And after all these things, do the Gentiles seek?" And the Lord just showed me that <coughs> Jesus talking to his disciples, which are Jewish people, yeah. and Gentiles. This is before he died, so Gentiles are outside of the covenant. And so he's saying, basically, all of those who are outside of the covenant seek these things. Mm -hmm. But you seek first the Father, and he'll give you all these things. So. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that he is appealing <coughs> to an older covenant. Uh, we eventually, if you remember, <coughs> the, the new covenant, I, you know, you, you poke buttons and you're going to get other stuff other than just the Holy Spirit. Oh, poke that uh, covenant button. <clears throat> we Gentiles were not cut, if you want to put it that way, into the new covenant. Now, in some ways we were, 
Because in Christ all died. But that all died, uh, or the covenant rather, remember, it very specifically says it. It was to the, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, none of which I was. Uh, upstairs, when you go up our stairs at the top where the lion and the lamb lay, there is a menorah just to the left of them. And we were in an, a junk shop, and there it sat for $15. I'd been looking for one. Oh, boy, I grabbed it up. And there was a person up at the counter that was doing business, and the person said, and they looked at us really hatefully. Yeah. It was, <clears throat> shall we say, it was a German community. I'm serious, it was. It was a German community. And are you Jewish? And we, of course, I'm, I'm so dumb. I just walked through life so naive about things. I smiled. I said, by adoption. <laughs> it just kind of popped out. <laughs> oh, adoption only. And you could tell, whew, I went right over. They had no idea what had just been said. And that's too bad. Uh, uh, the look was too bad also. Uh, Definitely not in the kingdom. Sad. Um, anyway, uh, anyone else on any of this? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was thinking it's interesting. I've been looking at the love of money in connection with contentment a lot lately. Um, and I was thinking it says the love of money is the root of all evil. So that means every evil in our lives is traced back to the love of money. So it can't just be what we think of when we think of money, kind of like everybody's been saying. It has to be something more. I was looking a little bit in Acts where um, the sign of the sorcerer um, loses his place of power that he had with all the people, and he sees that the Holy Ghost is given and he offers money. So money is power, and that's what we want. The love of money is the love of power. It's wanting to be in control of other people. It's wanting to be noticed. That's that's what money is. It's anything that can be traded. And just thinking how it says, um, even here in Matthew, when it talks about the um, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, he's saying don't love money, just like we've been saying. It's it's all, we have such a temporal way of thinking of money, but it's so much more than that. Even the word there for money, talk, uh, the love of money, it comes from a word that talks about silver, and then it talks about fond of, like a friend. And it's just how, it's the friendship, and we look for that in other places, but it's in Jesus Christ. He's the friend, and if, if we look to it any other way, it becomes the love of money, and it's the root of all evil. So I just... It is amazing how, especially when you look at Simon, he just, I'm, I'm glad they wrote the story down. I don't know how happy he would have been about it, but probably Peter was going, my name is Simon, and I got exposed in four different books, buddy, and you're going down with me. Uh, and, uh, Simon Peter says to Simon. Um, uh, and you see in him bitterness. I see in you the gall, the root of bitterness. You see he's bitter. Again, what we talked about a little bit this morning. And in his bitterness, he is demanding what? Uh, and you said it, really. The, I want to be looked at as a powerful person and I will pay you money so that I can be looked at as a powerful person. And we see that lust for power. And Simon just throws it all out there. The, the unholy trinity is there. And he is really letting us see it. So, very good. Thank you. Did I see another hand back there or not? Was I dreaming that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, just kind of on what Kenny was saying um, in Ecclesiastes 4. Since I have seen that every labor and every skill which is done is the result of rivalry between a man and his neighbor. This, too, is vanity and striving after wind. wind. Yes. Yeah. You, you th and that is so true. What? You know what? You know, <clears throat> Mother Russia and the Chai Coms and all these other people, they have a different economic... It's amazing to me that economic systems in this world get along. Well, they don't. It's called war. 
the Nazis were simply a socialist. That's what they were about, was socialism. The national, national N-A, Z, socialist party is what they were. And socialism is an economic system in many ways. And capitalism is what she just read. The rivalry between neighbors, that's what our economics... And we say, this is really stupid, by the way. I mean, I, I don't want to break your little American bubble. But it's really stupid when we go, capitalism is the best. Capitalism is the best. Capitalism is what she just read out of Ecclesiastes. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's dog eat dog, unless you're a little one. Uh, ex, I mean, it, it, it is. It's based on the love of money and therefore based on power and stomping other people into the ground. There are very few businessmen that have really gotten it right. That what's the real, the, the real, a real Christian businessman, uh, the concern should be what? Loving neighbor as self. Providing for God's ways. Uh, I think we talked about Welch's, uh, the company Welch's, uh, grape juice. And they got started because this Methodist man, believer, was a teetotaler. And he did not want people to have to come to communion and they, could, they only drank, they only had wine. And because you couldn't keep grape juice. By the way, that's a real stunner. Well, I forgot David the other day when he was here. He said something about it must have been grape juice. Well, I have to act, ask Dr. Davis. I was biting my tongue because they have to ferment. It's very low in alcoholic content, but it was ferment. And uh, Mr. Welch didn't want to see people stumble that were alcoholics that came in. And so that he created that company. Uh, you hear other companies that were created uh, for the purpose of people having jobs. You know, I mean, this is the way it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, capitalism is rooted very well in the love of money. We have a few evils going around here. I saw another hand up, up here. Oh, that was there, I'm sorry. I got super excited because uh, along with what Bethany was saying, Father took me to James, and James says, Go to now, you rich men. Weep in hell for your miseries that shall come upon you, because your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together to the last days. And then in Revelations it says, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I would that you were hot or cold. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And know not that you are wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not appear, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. Thank you. Anyone else on this? Yes, ma'am. Um, the laying of the, of the treasures. I was thinking about that this week, and um, I, I always thought, I think I've heard teachings on it where it's like, lay up treasures as in win souls for Christ, and that's a treasure in heaven. And <laughs> God's like, wait a second, those souls, like it's so easy for us to turn from God, from seeking Him, even if we do receive truth, it's so easy to fall back. Um, and He's like, that's even corruptible souls, that they're corruptible. So what is the only thing um, that's incorruptible? And it was like, oh, it's Jesus. Like, it's the only thing. Um, that should be our treasure. Um, and just like going back to the fasting part, um, I asked God, what does it mean to fast? And he's like, abstain from. So I'm like, oh, wow. And it wasn't just like physical things, but literally everything that's not Christ, we are to turn from. Because those, like you said, this whole passage is um, 
He's telling us to turn away from the things of this world, especially mankind, but the things of this world. And what are the hypocrites? The double-minded, who their countenance is sad and disfigured because they receive of the world and they look like the world. That's their reward, is the world. Yet they think they're good Christians going to heaven. And, um, and God just says so clearly, um, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and um, he says, when, you, when you're abstaining, this is how you do it. You put on, you receive my Holy Spirit, and you wash yourself in the Word, in secret. And then my life will be manifested in you openly. Like, I li I'll literally live my life out through you, openly. And then, um, because later on in the verse, you cannot serve God in so it's just, it's amazing tying it all together. Yeah. I cannot serve God and mammon. I don't know if you remember in the teaching <clears throat> the word mammon. An old Aramaic word, it eventually evolved into something else because now we think of mammon in terms of, oh, money. Uh, and what he meant was by the world system. But the old Aramaic word was actually the Aramaic word for faith. Isn't that interesting? That that word was the word for faith. You cannot have faith in God and faith. Because people began to... What he's talking about is, is the faith that we have in the world system. Somehow it's going to save us and we're going to be happy, etc. Anyway. Uh, Nate, you had your hand up too. Just, just thinking, this takes us all the way back around to the sin of Balaam. And uh, it's mentioned, you know, and... Uh, just that really at the heart of it, um, just like Bethany, I was just, I mean, I was just like, wow. I was just like, that's that's right. It goes so much more deeper than what we possess um, physically or financially because at the root of it, it's, it's a lot of it is a fear of man and um, a man's opinion of us and and also just a fear of, of our own selves and lo saving our lives, loving our lives because, you know, Jesus said, it, you know, if you want to save your life, you're going to lose it, and you're going to hand it over to me. And um, but yeah, it's just I was just reminded of you know how can you leave except you you know when you receive honor one of another, but yet you don't seek the honor that comes from God only. And that's that's the warfare. This is really the striving that we get at, which is the root of all sin is the receiving of recognition from someone else other than the Lord. Yeah. Whether it's ourself or someone else. How can you believe when you are seeking the mm -hmm. right. And that's that receiving. That's that laying up of treasures upon earth. That's right. And not receiving what? His glory. His recognition of him. I now recognize that way. I no longer have the image of the beast. My image. The image, the image of the of the beast around me. It's good. Thank you. Miss Davis. Saying, since we were talking about this the other day, that the whole thing of the fear of man, if we go really down to the level, it's I will be worshipped. And so I'm afraid of people because from them I may not get the worship that I so rightly deserve. You know, that I'm, it's driving everything. And so um, that is basically the lie. I will be recognized rather than God. And, Cain's demand was he was going to be recognized. He would do it the way he wanted to and be recognized. His anger, I believe, came out of the <clears throat> his, no, I want to be acknowledged. You know, I will be worshipped. And and Abel instead was, no, I will worship him. The exchange of, no, I'm going to do what would be bringing glory to him. And, um, and that's the driving man. You know, everything driven, driving that, that I will be as I will be worshipped. And if we don't receive that, then we, you know, it's back to forgiveness. Often our unforgiveness is because we didn't get what we you know, so thought we were to be receiving, you know, and from others. And uh, because of that, we become cast down. You, know, you do well, you, you know, why is your, why are your, is your countenance cast down? Sins crouching, and you know, it's master. But that's the whole thing. It's I will be worshipped. You know, the fear of man is 
I may not receive the recognition right. you know, from man that I, I deserve, which is a lot. Right. Folks, we didn't get anywhere near what I thought we would, but I'm not shocked at those kind of things anymore. Um, I will, this, this stuff only gets more exciting. I mean, as I'm going through studying more and more on the Holy Spirit and, and looking at other things at the same time, it's been a fun study.